terms of where the people are joining from. <laughs> I will manage the comments on the on the Facebook group. Okay, okay. Here we go. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Open Mic Foundation. Um, it is a bright and sunny day today on the Sunday afternoon. So thank you so much for joining. I have Salim Nati with me today. Thank you so much for joining, Salim. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It is wonderful to be here Shashini. and thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to speak yeah no problem thank you so much for coming through so so salim let's go through it right so um introduce yourself first you know who is salim and things before we go into the topic okay my name is salem um i am a speaker i do all things finances. That's my passion. I love money. I think money is <laughs> <loves me. laughs> Which woman doesn't like money, right? Yes, but I think it loves me back. So that's oh, the okay. thing. Okay. Got it. Um, so I, I specialize a lot in dealing with debt. You know, because I think if there's one thing that's crippling is debt. I mean, if you are bound by the chains of debt, it's very hard to move forward, no matter what you want to do. And if we look at even the cause um, of divorce, other than infidelity, it's finances, it's bad debt. You know, people mm -hmm. resign from work because they want to cash out their pension money to pay off debt. People commit suicide because of debt, you know? So there's a lot surrounding debt and mismanagement of finances. And that's my area of passion. So I speak a lot about that. Um, I have an organization called Debt Emancipation Movement. Mm -hmm. I also consult so people who need consultation to move from debt to wealth. That's what I do. I have 16 years experience in um, that field. And um, I also yeah, run youth programs. I have a program called Own Your Destiny. Um, and for the most part, um, one of my expertise is public relations, you know, brand marketing. So I do a lot of personal branding coaching as well speak a lot around personal branding and yeah I grow I grow I grow I address social ills such as teenage pregnancy drug related issues substance abuse I work a lot with teenagers so I'm a people's person you know oh, yeah and you are honey yeah, you so and I, I, I just follow passion because I believe God has given me a voice and I use that voice accordingly Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, let's go into it, right? I mean, financial survival kit for women. Yeah. You know, you've touched on a few things. You talked, you touched on divorce. You've, you've, you've just touched on, you know, the youth. You talk about people, you know, basically, you know, um, how can I say, resigning from their jobs to touch into their pension fund. Um, so yeah, so so I'm gonna give you a chance before I, I, I there's some questions popping in my head right now. So so let's go let's go over to um, financial survival kit. I'm gonna hand it over yeah. to you. You know, um, as 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 women, right? We yeah. have a lot going on as women. I mean, um, if if you look at the workplace, for example, I don't know if you've been um, exposed to an environment where they feel like you know, when a woman has babies, uh, you know, like, oh, you're pregnant again. Yeah. And then all yes, of a I sudden, am. you're not considered for that high position because, oh, well, you're going to need to take another break. So we, we are subjected to those kind of things. And I mean, things like pay gaps as well, where mm -hmm. you find that men earn more. Meanwhile, they're doing the same job with the women. And mm -hmm. so those kind of things they really make us sort of start at the back footing, if I can call it that. 
And mm -hmm. also, if you look around, there's a whole lot of single mothers who are taking care of their children. And so it's not just financially that you're taking care of the children, but it's emotionally as well. And when your emotions, I mean, everything rises and falls from emotions. How yeah. we feel about money is based on our emotions. I mean, if I can ask anyone now, what are your beliefs about money? How do you feel about money? You know, if somebody comes and borrows money from you and they say, I'm going to return it in three days, what happens inside you when they don't return it? What happens when you ask for money from somebody and now um, you don't have it on time to bring it back and they keep pestering you? How does that make you feel? When your children ask you for money and you're cash strapped, how do you feel? Do you get what I'm saying? And we yeah. hear a lot of women talk about um, retail therapy. But <laughs> how are you funding that retail therapy? Right? Are you using a credit card to go and buy yourself a new pair of shoes? Because all you are doing is just piling on problems. And now I would like to talk to women and say, if there's one thing we need to think of as females is protecting our financial future. Some women listening here are single, maybe in their twenties. If you are single, you're in your twenties. What do your thirties and your forties and your fifties look like? And what are you doing now to make that picture come into reality? when as far as your money is concerned. How many children are you going to have? How many children can you afford? How many will you afford in your thirties and your forties? Those are the things we don't think about as women. If you are in your thirties, again, maybe you do have children. If anything should happen to you today, God forbid you leave this earth, you die. What then? Maybe you do have finances in place for your children. Maybe you have a life cover and they are going to benefit 2 million rands, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But are they taught about money? Or are they no. going to squander that money? Do we teach our children about money? Who is your beneficiary even? If it's your children, what will happen? So. I want to drill in from today that we start taking charge of our lives financially, that is. Because things like death, they are unforeseen, but it's yep. inevitable. Another unforeseen thing is disability. What will happen if this body that you are using to earn an income doesn't function. Have you insured this body so that if it no longer functions, there is money coming in to substitute for this body that can no longer function? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and also, if we look at the divorce rate in South Africa, or anywhere for that matter, it's quite high. Mm -hmm. What have you as a woman put in place? What mm -hmm. will your finances look like if it happens, if divorce would happen? You know? Yeah. Yeah, some, yeah. Some are even staying in toxic marriages, abusive marriages, because there is no financial plan. And and, and those become real issues that women face because first of all i mean in my era where i come from i was brought up with the understanding that at some point in my life there is a man who's going to whisk me off and take care yeah. of all my financial needs yeah. i'm just going to say honey i need a pair of shoes and i'm going to get them I'm just mm -hmm. going to say, oh, I need that sofa to sit over there. Those curtains must hang there. 
and poof, it just happens. But life presents realities. And so sometimes women start making men financial plans. And as a result, we put off big financial decisions like buying a house, for example, buying big assets, getting shares, having a life cover. We put all of those off for when the man comes because we expect the man to be the one to do those things for us, you know? So, and even when we are married, we are not, we don't liberate ourselves. We mm. let the husband take care of the financial decisions and we are just there. So we need to start thinking as women and start doing things differently. It's not feminism. It is not rebelling or anything like that. But Absolutely. it's about saying, you know what? Yeah. I need to be in charge just as he is because we tend to live longer. Yep. We do. We tend to live longer. We tend to have the most health issues. Mm. But then what then happens? And that's why you find that we now start depending on our children and it becomes a burden. They start working backwards now because there's you who did not plan. So it's very important for us women to actually start facing our finances and saying, what does my financial life look like now? What should it look like today? What will it look like in the future? Because the system is geared up to burden us with debt. You look at the clothes you're wearing, you, yep. you, you because you went and opened a clothing account, right? We invest so much money in how we look because we think that this is how we are supposed to look or society is trying to dictate how we mm. need to. But at the end of the day, there are more important things in life than just your today. What are you mm. doing today? And so it is very important that we as women start thinking, how am I going to navigate around debt? How am I going to navigate around savings? How am I going to navigate around investments? And how am I going to navigate around insurances? So how am I navigating around debt, savings, investments mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. insurances for okay. the future. Those are the things we need to sit down and say, what is my plan for these four elements? So here's a question for you because you seem with 16 years of experience, I mean, you've come across a wide range. Salim, can you see me? Here we go. So you've definitely come across a lot of different types of people, different ages, different races, different diversities. Why do you think women don't do this? What do you, what do you believe the, the reason why women don't do this? Why do you think they wait for the man? It's, it's, our, it's the socialization. It's the way we are, it's the way we are brought up. What toys did you get when you were a child? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A dolly. A doll. A, yeah. And a stove. Mm -hmm. A cute little apron. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you were conditioned for the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the thing, right? You conditioned for the kitchen. Yeah. That, that there is, yeah. Yes. And you were conditioned for babies and taking mm -hmm. care of babies. You practiced when you were two, mm. take care of babies. You practiced when you were two to take care of the kitchen and the household. But what did your brother get? <laughs> he didn't get a doll. Listen, point taken, right? Point yeah. taken because for me as well, I mean, just before you could come on, I had Mara 
um, Glenny with me, and she's the CEO and founder of Tears Foundation, right? And she herself was also saying as well, from a society perspective, you know, the bullying that happens and, and things like that, it's, it's, you know, obviously it's got to do with culture and society and, and how it's, it's being brought up. But if we don't teach the children these type of things and we change that culture in their behavior, what yeah. they see, what they learn, what, and this is exactly the same thing, right? Yeah. If you're going to give a girl, if you're going to give a, a, your daughter a doll and give, and give, your, and give the boy a, a car, so obviously you're already setting them already for their path, right? Yeah. Um, it was a very interesting article and I have to share this with you, right? <laughs> and I asked some of my friends this, right? So I have a, a girl and a boy. They, okay. they tend to part though, right? And, and I tested this theory. So I want you to, to listen to this, right? So, okay. so when we bring up boys and versus when you bring up girls, right? We will say how many times, and I, and I said, test this with my, my friends that has boys and girls. So I'll, I'll, I'll ask the mom, not the dad, the mom. I'll ask the mom. So how many times have you told your daughter no today? Tell me, how many times have you said no to them? Okay, so my friend will say, okay, I probably said maybe three or four times. Okay, sure. How many times have you said yes to the boy? Woo. Oh, no. yeah. Why do we, and this is going to do it financially. So when we say yes to boys, they become more risk. They, they become the risk takers, right? Yeah. They will venture off. It doesn't matter what it is, whether, it, whether it's sports, whether it's skydiving, whether it's adrenaline, whether it's roller coasters, whether it's climbing up the trees, whether it's financial, they will take the risk. True. Why? Because they were always said, yes. They received the go-ahead. Yes, it was a go, 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 go. But now you have girls. We say more to women and girls. No. Why? Why do we do that? And I challenge my friends. Wow. I challenge them through and through. Because we, we are the ones that restrict the girls today. We are the ones that bring them up. And, and that is why I didn't ask the dad. I asked the moms because the moms are the one that are saying no to, to the, to the, to the girls and, and they're saying yes to the boys. So if my daughter says she's going to climb a tree, Oh, hell yeah. Climb the tree and break your leg. If you need to. Sure. <laughs> sure. Go for it. Do it. You want to jump off the plane? Go ahead and do it. Right ahead. There's no difference. There's no difference. It's the same. Like when we tell the boys at the age of 18, pack up your stuff, head out, go and find yourself college, you're working, do what you need to do. But we don't say that to our girls. Why, why, why our society, and I do blame the moms. I blame the moms. At the same time, I understand that's the way that you, brought, you were brought up, you were raised, yes. you were nurtured that way. But uh -huh. it doesn't have to be that way. Break the cycle. I just thought I would share that with you. Wow, that's, <laughs> a, very, that's a very interesting um, article. You see, the problems, even though the problems may differ, at the end of the day, we are all subjected to the same issues. Yes. When it comes to money, when it comes to decisions about buying, you know, um, especially now in the times that we live in where women are doing it for themselves. Women are, there are many households that are headed by women. And so if you are going to head up a household, you need some financial literacy or some basics to go by. You know, when we think about, okay, now I need to get a house. Sometimes people are happier to rent then to buy, mm -hmm. it's almost like, I don't know how we are wired to think about buying property, mm -hmm. right? So you need a house, you need a home. So understand that with bond repayments, what comes, 
You know, when you go to the bank and the bank says to you, I'm giving this to you at such and such a percentage. Mm -hmm. Understand that you can negotiate those interest rates. You don't have to accept. Mm -hmm. Understand mm -hmm. that you can actually say, I'm not happy with this. I'm going to go next door. And understand the tips and tricks around now that you've entered into this financial agreement or the state agreement, how do I make it go or how do I pay it off quicker? Because whenever you enter into a debt agreement, mm -hmm. the rule of thumb is you want to pay it off as quickly as possible. Yep. And you must always remember debt is expensive. You are paying for the debt. So knowing how much your installment is, is not enough. You need to know I'm taking this house that costs 800,000 rands, but by the time I finish paying, I will have paid 2.1 million. Those are the things you need to know. Mm. And how do I make my payment term shorter? You don't have to be in that bondage for 20 years. So those are the things we need to know. When you think of buying a car, the one thing that comes to mind is car finance. Mm -hmm. You rarely hear somebody say, oh, this is my second year now, I'm saving up for a car. Because we want things and we want them now. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We go and we take out car finance. Mm -hmm. When somebody's thinking about furnishing the house, again, you want to go to the furniture store instead of saving up and buying your pieces there at the time when you can afford. Because the reality is when we take out debt, it's because we can't afford to buy those things cash. Absolutely. And that's why we go and take out credit. So we need to be very, very careful about taking out credit. So whenever you think about a financial decision and, and this thing of making credit cards look fashionable, the credit card debt is the devil's cousin. <laughs> One of the, I'm telling you, very expensive easy to get entangled in that kind of debt because they mm -hmm. put that money there for you. They, you know, they make you feel good when they say to you, you have been pre-approved, you know? <laughs> you didn't apply for it. They just selected you. Yeah. Or they say you qualify for. And all of a sudden you start feeling important. <laughs> I qualify. But at the end of the day, it is all about trapping us into a debt cycle. Mm -hmm. And because us as women are emotional shoppers. We, are, we, we, we let our emotions run. On a sad day, you want to go and buy stuff. We are just trapping ourselves even more. And, um, and, and now you are this woman you need to understand how to navigate around debt. You need to also now start understanding that if you have children, you need to do money differently. Because at any point, like you say, your daughter would climb a tree. At any point, something can happen to the child that the medical aid doesn't cover. Yeah. Where will that money come from? if you don't have a kitty somewhere that has money for emergencies, mm -hmm. you will then be forced to do what? To go and borrow from the bank. And if you have a bad credit record, mm -hmm. the only other thing you can do is borrow from family members or a loan shark or machonisa. And we know how those relationships end up. Yeah. And so we need to think about our monies differently. And we need to teach our children the basics of money. Involve them in your budgeting. 
let them understand that there's something called budgeting because budgeting helps you control your ins th that need for instant gratification. Absolutely. Yep, because does. now, if it's not in the budget, we're going to need to wait till next month. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now they are learning to understand how money is navigated. You don't have to satisfy that need immediately. There are things we would need to wait for. And in, in turn, they will then learn how to control their money. Because I, you know, parents, when parents take out a life cover, they want to ensure that their children don't suffer when they leave this earth. But if you don't teach them how to work and navigate that money, mm -hmm. they may squander it. And oh, absolutely. To square one. Mm. And so that money was no good for them. Mm. So it's important that as women, we teach our children about money. But we must yeah. learn because you cannot pour from an empty cup. So we mm. must learn about money. Invest in learning about money. That's what I want to say to women. In, and, and have a decision. When it comes to debt, I will only get the big things that I know I cannot afford to buy cash. And if it's a 20 year bond, I am going to make sure I finish it in 10 years or whatever the case may be. If it's about savings, I'm going to make sure that my savings are, I have money that is equal to six months worth of my salary should I lose my job or whatever the case may be. When it comes to investments, there is money that I'm going to lock far away so that in the future, I can be able to enjoy, go on holiday or whatever you want to do. Maybe you would want to then cash that money out and buy a car cash, whatever your decision is. And when it comes to things like insurances, make sure that number one, the body that does the work is insured. Number two, make sure that you have insurance for the future of your children. Number three, make sure that the debt that you have is insured. You have a debt of a home loan, make sure you have insurance for it. You have a credit card, make sure you have insurance for it. You have a car, make sure you have insurance for it. So that if you are in a position of not being able to pay it, there is an insurance that pays it. So all you are saying is, if there is no power or energy or ability rather to bring in an income, whatever needs money will still be taken care of. Very different way of how we were taught, right? Because if I look back, we didn't even have conversations like this with our parents, right? Yeah. I mean, we weren't taught that we need to save up. Um, people have this idea that if you want something, oh, no, it's okay, let's get debt, let's get a credit from the store so that we could have it now. And I think that's what it is. I can have it now. Yeah. There's no willingness to wait. There's no willingness to save up in order to, you know, to get it. I do believe that people live beyond their means. Yeah, we do. A lot of times. Uh, I mean, look at, so credit providers, for every thousand rands that you earn, they are willing to extend 3,000 rands worth of debt. Wow, that's, that's a crazy number. Yeah. That's an insane number. Yeah, so times three of what you make, they are willing to borrow. Already, wow. that's how we are starting off. And I mean, if you listen to 
any youngster, somebody who's working for the first time, mm -hmm. can't wait to go and open that clothing account so that they look a certain <laughs> way. Yep. They can't wait to, you know, all of a sudden they want to live in a particular area mm -hmm. and, and, and nothing wrong with that. But what does the pocket say? What does the wallet say? Because at the end of the day, the reason why we think the way we do is because we don't have a plan. We really yeah. don't have a plan. We're yeah. just going through life. And because we don't have a plan, the marketing people, the advertisers, the banks, the credit providers, they have a plan for us. Mm -hmm. They are going to advertise and advertise and advertise you know, this Women's Month. Have you watched TV on Women's Month? No. It is all woman enticing. Wow. Right? A special when you open this account for women yeah. only, women's discount, women this and women that. And that's just how we are socialized. But you hardly ever see anything that will make you financially savvy. It's all about what to consume, right? Yeah. What it's the wants and the needs. It's the wants and the needs that, that people are needing in order to satisfy yes. their, their, their themselves, right? And how quickly and how easily you can get it. Yeah. You can get it now. I mean, nowadays, you don't even need to get out of bed to get a person. <laughs> yeah. Okay? You can be lying there in bed. You take out your phone or your laptop, gadget, whatever. You just log in. You apply. And you know what? Two hours later, you have 150,000 rands in your bank account. Yeah, people, yeah, I don't know. Hey, I think my mom, my mom told me I got married um, at a very, very young age. And my mom said this, my mom was a, a traditional housewife, um, never worked in her life. My dad took care of her. And very, they still married. They are 55 years married this year. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And my mom said to me when I was going through a very difficult time in my marriage at that time, and she said to me, and, and it was wise words, right? I never knew what it meant at first. And she said to me, she said, Sesh, a man is only supposed to know what he needs to know. <laughs> I was young. I was young. I was very, very young, right? And I'm sharing this with you. And, and I was really, really young. I never knew what she meant at first, okay? And I was like, hmm, okay. And then I started growing in my career quite quickly, all right? I think I peaked at my career at the age of 32. Wow. But prior to that, prior to that, and, you know, it's, you know this, this, this saying just kept on with me, right? And, okay. So I got a bonus here, and I got a bonus there, and I got shares here. And I just didn't tell anyone. It was a secret little stash. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it's, a, it's a secret little stash that nobody knows about, right? And guess what? Nobody needs to know about it. Yeah. It's for you, okay? And it's when you do want those shoes or when you do want to go away with the girls or when you do want to. Nobody needs to know. It's your hard work. And... You know, she said that to me and, and it clicked. And ever since then, it, it made me, you know, realized, I mean, I have sought through my career, you know, very quickly and very fast. And I am where I am today from a financial position um, where I'm, you know, exceeding. Um, I don't have any debt besides the credit card. I mean, I don't have any clothing. If I don't have the clothing, I don't need it. Stay without it, right? But at the same time as well, we don't get taught this at a young age, right? We True. don't get taught at a young age that we need to take care of ourselves financially, okay? Very interesting. Um, I was speaking to my lawyer the other day and she said, 
the courts don't hear much about how women is the breadwinners in the household. They, okay. they don't hear that. It's very rare. And when they do hear it, it's very rare that you find the woman who actually wants to fight in court for it because they just give in. They just give in, right? It's sad. Yeah. It, it is it's sad. very sad. Yeah. I like um, mom's advice a lot. <laughs> similar, similar to advice I received from my late mom. Yeah. And here's the thing. Sometimes you may be that rescue ticket in your family. Yep. Sometimes you find a couple, they enter into a business deal of some sort mm -hmm. that sometimes backfires. Mm -hmm. And your stash may be just what your family needs yep. to get a head start again. Yeah. So it actually either, way, yeah. either way, a woman does need to have that stash. Yeah. Even if, even if the woman is not working, right? The, the, the husband, you, you've got some type of agreement with him. He's giving you money to, he's giving you money to, 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 how can I say, fund or maintain the household, right? Nothing is stopping you from taking a little bit aside and keeping it out. It's not that it's a secret from him. It's not that you're not taking care of the family, but it's ensuring that you have something put away so that one day that if you do need it, it's there for you. Yeah. Um, and the thing is that, I mean, we had last week, we were talking to AFBOP South Africa and Tears Foundation was on and they had this program. They launched uh, a gender-based violence program. And these type of incidents, and we all know this happens in South Africa, right? And even around the world for that matter, is that you do need money in order to survive out there. Yeah, doesn't matter how much you need something. True. True, and I mean, people think that it is for malicious intent, but actually not. No, actually not. It is very, very, very important. And also research, research. Where can I put my money so that if I put five rands away? When I get it, it's now seven rands or 10 rands or whatever the case may be. And people need to be very careful of get rich quick schemes. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot going around recently, especially yeah. with Bitcoins as well. I've been noticing the markets on those things as well. Bitcoins and the markets and investments. Yeah, we need to get to a point where we are not desperate about money. You see, when we make the right decisions from the onset, when you have your head figured out how you are going to navigate around debt, around savings, around insurance, you, and, and you live within your means, you, you may then find yourself that you, you don't get to a point of being desperate. Because people, when they're desperate for money, they fall for these traps. Yeah. Unfortunately. So you want to be at a point where you are not desperate. Yes, we want the nice things. We want everything. And we want everything now, immediately. Mm. But life doesn't work like that. And so we need to be very smart about what do we want and when and have a plan on how to get there. In fact, one income stream nowadays is very risky. It's an extreme sport if you are going to have just one income stream. Very, very risky business. So yeah. if you are working find other ways of making extra income. We are all gifted in some way or another. You know, if you really, you know that that passion does come out. That, you know, there are people who make samosas and then there's that one person who really knows how to make samosas. <laughs> and that one person must make samosas and sell samosas. 
<laughs> and, have, and make an extra income on yep. some, but have more than one income stream and teach your children. Let me tell you, with my kids, when I give them money or when I pay them for a task or a chore, whatever the case may be, I deduct tax. So I give <laughs> them the money okay. and then I take it again. I take the tax portion so that they understand there's something called tax. And if they need something and their money has run out, it's time for them to come and borrow. And when they borrow, I charge interest. <laughs> now that is something that I think all parents should teach their children. <laughs> that way, that way they are not going to be enticed because mm. debt is enticing. You, you do realize that debt is enticing. Absolutely. Yeah. And if it's, and if it isn't enticing, it comes as though it's a need. Mm. People believe, oh no, I need this. Yes. <laughs> I need this clothing account for my children. I need this personal loan. For, I need, I need, I need. Yeah. Yeah. No, true. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's it's quite it's quite obvious that you know women out there, they do need to do some homework. They do need to get in touch with people like yourself, um, Salim, so that they get, you know, educated and they get an, a better understanding for planning from a financial perspective, because you are so uncertain of the times these days. You don't know what's going to happen. In a split second, you don't know what's going to happen. There's a lot of people that's, that's losing their jobs. There's a lot of people with disability. There's a lot of people that are so dependent you know from themselves to on other people that they don't realize what they're talking and for me it's that take care of yourself be in charge of your life whether yeah. it's emotionally financially you know you have you have the time to go in and sit down and do that and i want to say they auto users i think contact people, contact, you know, Salim. So, I mean, if anybody wants her details, please contact me. You know, if, if somebody wants to have a workshop, you know, contact her and, and sit together, get a group of ladies and discuss this, right? If you need help in planning, if you, if you need guidance, if you need some understanding around certain aspects of your life, you need to reach out to the people that know. I'm not saying that everyone knows everything, but there's yeah. experts like Salim out there that can help you guys, you know, to get a better understanding and to help yourself plan for the future. Because again, to Salim's point as well, is that you never know what's going to happen. True. Not at all. Salim, I want to say thank you so much. Any last words from your side? I just want to say that whatever decisions we make as women, just have the future in mind. Before you do something, have a proper plan, at least of how you would like to see it work out. And if at all possible, try and minimize debt to big things like a house and a car and try and save for everything else I cannot stress teaching your children about money and protect your financial future. Protect your financial future. Protect it for yourself. Protect it for your children. We are not saying that husband is going to divorce you, no. But what will happen if he dies? Yeah. Are finances in place? Will you still live the same life with your children? if he's no longer there or if a disability comes, you know? So yeah. make sure that you are protected. And I just want to wish all the women out there a disease-free, disaster-free, <laughs> and a debt-free future. Wow. Wise words from a wise woman. <laughs> Thank you so much, Salim. I truly appreciate your time on a Sunday afternoon. Thank you for the viewers that's, that's, that's online right now. I want to say thank you to everyone. 
Um, we have Kitchen Talks next week. And Kitchen Talks next week is about women of today. How do we see the woman of today? How do we feel the woman of today? How do we react and behave of women to today? How has society changed women of today? And that's Kitchen Talks next week, guys. So please join us next week on, on Sunday at 3 p.m. Um, we have people from all around the world that's, that's going to be joining us. So please join, please join for next week. And, and Salim, thank you so much for your time and your wisdom and your wise words. I, I want to say, you know, please on, on Facebook, put your details onto the comments for the people to reach out to you, your website, um, you know, people that want to contact you, you know, for, for some financial advice, um, you know, the workshops that you may be having, please, you know, send it through to them. Um, put it onto your onto your comments and I'm sure somebody's going to reach out to you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, take care you. of your yeah, thank you so much. I, I've learned so much as well. Um, so thank you so much and and have a fantastic afternoon. Thank you. I appreciate being here. Have a fantastic afternoon too. Oh, thank you so much. Cheers everyone. Take be safe. Cheers. Bye.